about writing is a writers for writers to educate, encourage, and promote writers. Join us as we interview people with experience in all areas of writing. And today we are excited to introduce Susan Lawrence. Susan, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Um, I was an elementary teacher for many years um, and quit early to speak and write. And now I am, my husband is retired and we live in a house with a little short-legged dog and, and I write. And what state are you from or are you living I'm in? From, I'm from Iowa. We live in Des Moines, but I live next to a lake. So that allows me to get out and enjoy the country. And I just that want to say that Susan is my critique partner from a long time, and we've gotten to read some of each other's things. And she's recently, or I don't know how recently, but had an experience in Africa. Do you want to tell us about your Africa experience? I would love to because um, I call my books fiction with a purpose, and uh, that is all because of Africa. Um, when I was just about finished with the writing of my first novel and knew it was going to be published, I thought about how I wanted to give some of the proceeds away. And at that time, our small group was supporting a pastor in the country of Swaziland. Swaziland has now been renamed Eswatini, but it's a tiny country almost surrounded by South Africa. And we had a chance to meet um, the organizers of Poor International, which was the organization that we were supporting the pastor through. And they were at a friend's house and we spent the evening with them and they shared their hearts and their vision for building baby homes and children's homes for abandoned babies and children in Eswatini. The country has been hit hard by the AIDS epidemic and babies are abandoned in fields, public toilets, left at the hospital. And if there's no one to care for them, they die. So they, they had a vision to build these homes and I thought, oh, that would be perfect for the proceeds of my book. But I didn't say anything to my husband. And a few le weeks later, he called me into the living room and he said, I think we should donate the proceeds of your books to Poor International. Yay. So That's that was wonderful Great. So tell us about the book that you wrote um, based in Africa. All right. Um, we did donate our proceeds to Poor International. And two years after my book was published, we were blessed to be able to travel to Africa and to see the very first baby home finished and to welcome the first child into the baby home. Do you remember his or her name? Her name is Treasure. Oh, that's beautiful. And she is indeed a treasure. But while we were there, I visited the care centers where they feed the children and give them a lesson. And as a retired teacher, I was struck by the lack of books in the care centers and in the places where the children lived. So I decided right then that I wanted to write a book for the children about the children. I wanted it to reflect the country of Swaziland or Eswatini. So I came home and I wrote a picture book, but I'm not an artist. And <clears throat> so I just put it on the shelf and that winter 
when I was in Louisiana, I met a woman from my home state of Iowa, who just <laughs> happened to be an artist. Well, I asked, so her she, I asked her if she, um, <coughs> excuse me, I asked her if she would be willing to do the illustrations, and she had to think about it, but she did indeed do the illustrations. Mm. And last November, the book Shepherd of Eswatini was released. It is written in both languages, in English and Saswati, the native la language of Eswatini. And it's, a and, mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful book. <laughs> um, thank you. Purchase of this book, this book is sold in America and a purchase of this book enables me to buy books to distribute to the children of Eswatini, which I hope I can do in person after the pandemic calms down. That would be fantastic for you to get to go back and see how the children are doing. And, and essentially orphanages, is that what they're building? Um, yes, but it's, um, there are homes, there are now three homes, there's 26 children that live in the homes, there's a boy's home, a girl's home, and an infant's home, and the caretakers live there as well, so it's kind of a fam more family than your typical orphanage. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yeah, sounds really good. Tell us about your other books. What other writings do you have? Um, I have two family devotions that are no longer in print. And then after I retired from teaching, I had time to write novels. And my first novel was Atonement for Emily Adams, which is in the genre of women's fiction. Um, just this year, I released Restoration at River's Edge which is also um, women's fiction. The main character, however, is a man and he is grieving his wife's death and he follows her dream of restoring her uncle's home and turning it into a restaurant on a bike trail. And he hopes to find healing from that. That's a great setup. I've also written two children's books, The Long Ride Home, which is a story about the orphan trains, which came from New York to the Midwest. And in my story, of course, they come to Iowa. Mm -hmm. And The Blue Marble, which is a story about a little boy that finds a blue marble, take, puts it in his pocket, and it takes him back to 1946. Wow. <laughs> That sound, those sound like fun books to read. Thank you. I hope that they are. <laughs> so give us um, your advice for someone just getting started in children's or youth fiction. Don't give up. Um, I will never be a John Grisham or a Karen Kingsbury, but I'm Susan Lawrence. And God gave me stories to write. And those stories have the ability to touch or inspire or to motivate someone in a way that no other story has. Uh, my first woman's fiction book, someone made the comment that this book changed my life. Mm -hmm. And... So that book was worth writing, if only for that one person. That's right. Yeah. So don't give up. Keep at it. Write your own story, the story that God's given you. Great advice. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And let's see. Oh, did you want to say anything about what you're working on right now? Um, well, that's kind of... Um, Terry, you had asked me about um, using life experiences 
And our family was really blessed because my mother was a diary writer. And I have all of her diaries from the time she was 13 on up. And she spent five years as a young woman in Des Moines working for wealthy families as a maid. Wow. And I used those experiences from her diary to create a totally fictional character, Ruth, who lives in Des Moines and works as a maid. And that was a fun way to incorporate something that um, was special to me and also to me a very interesting time and an interesting culture, 1933. Yeah, so many historicals <laughs> write about far in the past, but this is more recent past, but it's, it's interesting still to read about that. Right. And so when can we get to read this book? <laughs> it will <laughs> I work slowly now <laughs> um, and I will be editing it for at least another year. Well, then it'll be perfect when you're done. <laughs> well, no. But <laughs> well, that's about all the time we have. It was so good to meet you, Susan. And thank you, Terry, for being our fearless leaderette. <laughs> Thank you, Terry and Addie, for having me on. It's all about writing. Yeah, thank, you <laughs> thank you. And thanks, everybody, for watching.